Hey everybody, it's Karen Bryant and Pete coming here with you. Welcome to uh, the podcast. Last week we had Darren Crookshank on. You can still find that one, of course, on YouTube uh, here on uh, YouTube forward slash Karen Bryant. You can look up Darren Crookshank there if you want to download that MP3. You can go to mmeheat.com forward slash podcast. This week we're going to have Tyron Woodley on with us. T Wood! T Wood. T Wood, that, that's kind of like a questionable nickname. Is it? Like, well, like T Wood. It's like. You're what? not sure. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean you got T Wood? What is that? Okay, mean? well, in this, you know, time, it, uh, in this case, it just means Tyron Woodley. No, well, yeah. I T Wood. Part, you know, T Wood, I don't know. It's like, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Fourth grade humor here to get the show going. T Wood. T Wood. T Wood. Right. Uh, Tyron is ranked number three right now in the UFC's welterweight division. So uh, we'll talk to him about who he wants to fight. Also, you know, he's from Ferguson, Missouri. A lot of bad stuff going on there, obviously. It's uh, interesting to get his perspective on that. And he's been doing a movie. He's in the NWA movie, uh, Straight Out of Compton, that's coming out. So I, I, I'm curious because that's a big deal for a guy to cross over from UFC and to make a movie. So I want to definitely talk to him about that. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. It is impressive. Um, so, you know, I just got back in town last night. I went to Kenny Florian's wedding in South Carolina. I've always referred to it as South Kakalaki. I, I thought that was... Or I, I I've, I've never heard that. You've never before. heard of South Kakalaki? South Kakalaki. Yeah, I don't know. I, um, have you ever heard anyone else say that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I guess friends of mine from, I don't know. <laughs> no, like don't. imaginary, imaginary friends. Anyway, it was all lovely. Stuffed animals lined up around Once, your bed. Yes, my, all, my. They're all, hey, yes. <laughs> South Kakalaki, <laughs> Karen. Uh, want to congratulate them again. It was a really nice wedding, really beautiful, out in this uh, botanic uh, garden, and Kenny looked great, and Clark is lovely, Brian looked great. She, you know, it was really, really fun. Um, and uh, it was nice just to get away for a little. I kind of went a little radio silent off of like the internet. And said it was kind of, and you feel like you missed stuff, but it was kind of nice to jump back on and just be like, wow, you know, life exists without tweeting about everything every two seconds. You were a slacker for the week. I did totally yeah. slack. Who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? So that was fun. Uh, this week, big week for fights. We finally got fights oh, again. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> Everybody's been jonesing. We've got UFC 179 coming up, and of course, that is Jose Aldo defending his title against Chad Money Mendez. This fight was supposed to happen in August, and it got postponed, uh, and now it is finally happening. It's happening down in uh, in Rio. Um, Pete, I'm curious what your take is on this one. Uh, Jose Aldo, a very dominant fighter. He's only, like, I believe his record is 24-1. and one. He didn't even lose that fight that he lost at, at featherweight where he fights. Usually he had gone up to lightweight. Didn't, you know, didn't go his way. But the guy hasn't lost since, I believe, it's 2006 or something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, the first time that they fought... A lot of people said that it's just he only won the fight because he grabbed the fence. Now, you know, Chad's going for a takedown and, and Josie, you know, grabs the fence, which we've all seen can be uh, just kind of an instinctive re reaction. Right. You know what I mean? I think certainly there are times when people plan to do it. Uh, strategically. And then there's other times like, hey, whoa, I'm falling. You know what I mean? Yeah. I grab onto this. Uh, I would like to know in your comments whether you believe it was strategic or accidental. Well, so you told me about uh, Fence Gate. Can we go oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you told me about Fence Gate, and then I watched the, uh, the thing. And, yeah. And the way you described it, the passion of the people, I expected that he actually ripped a part of the <laughs> fence down and then beat him with the <laughs> fence. And then I saw it, I'm like, what? No. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. He won that fight. Well, he, <laughs> turns, around, well, he turns around and You lands, know, whether like, he grabbed the fence, it, it, you know, come on. Yeah. He won the fight. It, it, it's not even, uh, it's, the, the knee that he lands after is so so crushing. It's so yeah. crushing. I think the knee is, is more than the fence. Won the more fight, than the, more yeah. than the fence. So that that happened. So Chad has got a chance at redemption here. Like I said, right. this was supposed to happen in August. So I'm thinking, you know, sometimes uh, I think the fight got canceled enough time maybe to stop him. The problem, you know, when fights get canceled is you're kind of ready to peak at a certain right, time right, and then right. now you have to change it a little bit. So had to postpone it. But, um, you know, Chad's been winning fights. They both uh, obviously clearly won a lot of fights right. uh, since they fought. That was in January of 2012. But again, like I said, in the comments, I'd love to know uh, your opinion on, on Fencegate Fence Fence Gate 2012. Gate. Uh, and if you think the fight will go any differently, because obviously Jose is known for those knees. All you need to do, if you don't know Jose Aldo, if you're uh, like newer to this, um, do yourself a favor. There's some really good highlight uh, reels of him. 
authorized or not, I don't know, but um, amazing. So it's all about the knees. And when you see him kicking Uriah Faber, you're like, oh, oh just, just stop, just stop, just stop. The kicks to the legs it's, are just it, It's brutal. the kind of thing where you're watching it, however, you're like, oh, my God. And you're, if you look back in the day, Uriah put out these pictures of his leg. is just destroyed. Just, well, just, and it's also just kind of an annoying way to get, like, be beaten too. He's just ah, <laughs> ah. We stop it, right, you know, right, and right. like, and you just become like more limper right, and limper, right. and you're like, stop. And right. you're right, and you're trying to stand. You see them, the guys trying to stand, and and, and I feel like that's the sound effect. That happens. And if every those time. guys were doing that, like, I think like, what would happen if I took oh, those kicks? Like, on. to just be like a snap. <laughs> you, you, you know, you just like. Oh. Like this silent, <laughs> this silent scream of pain. Rest in peace, high old guy. Why right. did I stay in school? <laughs> you know, that's the best. That, um, that's the there best stay in school <laughs> advertisement. Stay in school. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, so, I got a hard time going against him. Yeah, uh, it's very hard. I, I and that's the thing. You know, Chad is so good and so explosive and very powerful and has proven he has the power in his hands. Uh, takedowns are great. It's just, it's hard to bet against Jose Aldo, especially the fight is in Brazil. You know, before when they were going to fight, it was going to be in Los Angeles. And maybe not being on home right. soil would have affected Jose. I don't know. The guy just wins wherever he goes, usually. So I'm not sure if that's a huge, uh, as huge a deal. Um, some people will, conspiracy theorists will say that, you know, a Brazilian fighting in Brazil always has a better chance than fighting somewhere else. Brazil gate. Brazil Gate. Let us know your thoughts on Brazil Gate. Should a, yes, should a Brazilian ever be allowed to fight in Brazil? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. If Jose uh, retains his title, he will be the only non-U.S. Uh, born champion, the, the only non-American champion here because um, <laughs> we used to have Henan Barrow. We used to have Anderson Silva in the mix. At one point, we also had Junior Dos Santos. These guys are now not champions anymore. So Jose Aldo is the uh, holdout for Brazil. I'm not sure I want to hear it. This is, again, another one of those questions for UFC 179. Will the United States hold all the belts? And if we do hold all the belts, how awesome are we? <laughs> On a scale from 1 to 11. I'm going to put in 11 in case you want really? to say right, we are Nigel super Tuffle. awesome. Okay. Uh, super okay. awesome. Uh, so that's, uh, that's an interesting storyline. It... So Russia holds nothing. Putin, <laughs> Putin with his chest bearing, yeah. riding his half donkey, half horse, and oh his God. country has nothing. Not currently. You know, uh, Nurmagomedov and all these guys are from Dagestan, which, you know, if you speak to them, they don't say they're Russian. I, I'm, right, honestly, right. I don't know all the geopolitics of where you, they, you should say you're from right now. But there is a quote-unquote Russian contingency, certainly on the rise. I can see it happening in the future. Are they slow in getting into the UFC? Or no, what? there's actually because a Because there's a lot of b b boxers, Russian boxers. Yeah, well, Bagutinov had a chance at... Well. Uh, yeah, Bagutinov had a chance at um, Demetrius Johnson. He lost. Also got flagged for cheating afterwards. Uh, Habib is, um, was on the rise and actually we signed a fight to fight Donald Cerrone, which could really position him well in the lightweight division. And literally, like minutes after he signed the fight contract, went to start to train and got hurt. It's crazy. Right. Um, so when he comes back, he's going to definitely be in the mix. I mean, no, there, there are some guys in there. It's just, you know, not that many yet, um, but they're on the way. But uh, Habib, you know, trains at, at AKA uh, with Daniel Cormier and, and the guys and Cain Velasquez, the heavyweight champ. So. He has a future there. Uh, in the co-main event at UFC 179, we have Phil Davis versus Glover Teixeira. Now, here's the thing. Glover Teixeira was the guy that the UFC tried to get for six years or so. They tried to get this guy forever, forever, forever. They know him from training with, uh, with Chuck Liddell. And literally, he had some problems uh, with immigration papers and all this thing. Couldn't come. Finally came to the UFC a couple of years ago now and uh, was winning, was beating people. Um, beat Rampage, beat Ryan Bader, beat Fabio Maldonado, beat Kyle Kingsbury. Then he had his chance at John Jones. That didn't go his way. But listen, it always goes John Jones' right. way. So there's absolutely no shame in losing to John Jones. Uh, Phil Davis actually um, has been also winning fights. And then he had a fight against Anthony Rumble Johnson in Rumble's comeback fight. And that went Rumble's way, which was, which was I don't want to say surprising. It's just that Rumble had been fighting in other organizations. And so people tend to start to forget about people or write them off and always pr presume a UFC guy is better than a right. non-UFC guy. Of course, Rumble was in the UFC before and came back. 
back uh, and and really stuck it to Phil. Actually, um, it was a, it was a really good fight for a rumble. So Phil is looking for a win as well. Here's the thing I say about the Brazilians losing in Brazil. Phil actually went down to Brazil before and beat Leota Machida on Brazilian soil, which is like a like Leota rarely loses, uh, and so to to beat Leota Machida is a, an achievement in and of itself. But to do it down in Brazil, it was a really really close fight. Uh, but Phil got the win. So if I'm Phil Davis, I'm pretty confident about going and fighting Glover Teixeira in Brazil. Um, but it's it's an interesting fight. You know, Glover is very dangerous. If you get, if you, if, <laughs> we talk two things Pete Cummins needs to avoid: Jose Aldo's kicks and getting put on the fence by Glover to share. It's like good night on and an it, audit it, and it, an it, income it, tax it, audit. I just did my income taxes. Three things. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. Somebody who works for the IRS who can do a, um, a knee kick would right, be my right. worst nightmare right. right now. But yeah, Glover is incredibly dangerous when he gets you. Like you, it's it's like literally all you can think to yourself is, "Don't get against the cage. Right. Please don't get against the cage. Don't get against the cage." Because he just tees off. Like it's you're, you're it's just you're done. Well, you're I done. Want, I want Phil Davis to win. Yeah. Just because of the name, because that's such an American name, like Phil Davis. Phil Davis, and he's Mr. Wonderful. No, it, like yeah. Phil Davis. Hi, I'm here to do your taxes. <laughs> uh, um, no. I'm Phil Davis. Of course you are. <laughs> of course you know? you're Phil Davis. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I just want a Phil Davis to win. All you know? right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, there yeah. you go. Yeah, there we go. There okay. you go. That's well, it. it's going to be. I think. I think that'll actually be uh, an entertaining fight. Phil is uh, a great wrestler, known for no, you know, known for being able to take people down, but. Glover is a terrific wrestler as well. In fact, I've been over to uh, Black House at times. That, you know, he trains Leoto, and he, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a great wrestler himself. Um, Phil is definitely faster, but uh, Glover, I believe, has the heavier hands. Right. So that one uh, that one should be interesting as well. So that's UFC 179. That's a Saturday on pay per view. I will be doing the weigh-in show on Friday. Uh, I'm not working fight night. Got that got that night off. Just going to be out. I don't know. We, we got to find a place to watch. Your house, great, Pete. Oh. Don't try to make what you're going to be doing. <laughs> I'm going to be out. You're going to be out partying. Is what you're no. <laughs> no, I have to say there's something nice about you know working the way in show, right. setting everybody up, getting everybody like fired up and hyped for it, and then fight night. I actually get to, you know, if I wanted to drink, <laughs> and I rarely do. Uh, that I could have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Are we in the line part of the show now? <laughs> when I'm flying through the air, deflecting bullets with my chest, uh, I'm... <laughs> No, I actually I love it's going nice to be able to throw back a beer. I love going to the bar cause, and to watch a fight because I love seeing the women who are like really into it. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. No, they're like a couple like very attractive, you know, w- you know, and they look all demure. Then they're like, come on, this is it. you know, you're like, oh my god, where did that ugly, where did that ugly personality just because jump I've out? Because I've told of? you this before, women, we we are just as angry, if not angrier, at stuff in the world that we, we really right. wanna we really want to tear somebody's head off sometimes. So you don't buy that like if women ran the world it'd be a really peaceful place. No, no. No. Yeah, no. Yeah. Cause we are you, you know, cause re- oh really Putin? Really? Oh you're gonna not call me back? Okay. You know what I mean? Listen, I got all ghetto for a second. I'm so not like that at all. That's what's hilarious about this is I just ask Wade, have I ever gone like this to him? Have I ever done that to you? Only on uh, no. four nights a week. He's lying. He can't even, he can't even lie. You guys can't see Wade, but he has a black eye right there where, like, Karen just took off her heel and was like... Because I was out of town you know, for a few She days. went... <laughs> and spit at him and took off. You know, it was this whole really bad thing. He put great. the chicken down. Oh, no, he <laughs> didn't. Uh, I actually do love fried chicken. I know it's like... Yeah. It's, 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 I like fried chicken, too. <laughs> Literally one time though we were eating it, and I guess I was really. I think this like, is somewhat even God. racist that we're talking about fried chicken. Um, no, I really, even, like you can be in this conversation, but I just have to remember: <laughs> do not get me to say anything about fried. Karen, do not drag me into this. Do you know how much trouble I can Literally, get? Literally one time I was eating it, and I guess I was like really getting into it. And he's like, "Damn, like damn," with the really with the fried chicken, like he. Uh, I don't know. You think we have a big bucket of it? We have plenty. You don't need to. 
devour the marrow out of that one. Yeah, guy. and he likes mayonnaise. <laughs> um, I don't know. Now that I, I don't never get like, I never realized like mayonnaise was like a real like waspy he, white thing. Oh yeah, like. well he, the, the, you never heard no, the story? No, I have Where heard. I sent him to the grocery store and we live sort of in the hood-ish. Right. And I sent him to the grocery store because we actually did need mayonnaise or something. And he thought I, I set him up for failure. He thought that they actually didn't sell it. Because he said he was going up and down the aisles, up and down the aisles yeah. and couldn't find it. And then, and then I was setting him up to have to ask somebody there at the employee to, who might happen to be brown skinned, where's the mayonnaise? You should have said, said for mayonnaise and cr- cr- crackers. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need. Can I get mayonnaise some, and crackers? Some salty crackers. And, uh, Wonder, uh, Wonder yes, Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he did find it. But um, how we digressed into fried chicken, I'm not sure. Not, oh, not we. Saying, not we, by the way. I have to remove myself from the fried All right, chicken. I think I remember. Anyway, I was saying on Friday, I will be doing the weigh in show. Uh, and getting everybody ready for that. It's going to be fun. I'm going to have, uh, I believe it's Dominic with me and Daniel Cormier. And the big news for DC is that he is officially going to be our co-host on UFC tonight. Right. So I'm well, excited for, for DC. I, you know, he really is uh, a lot of fun. And he's smart. He knows his, you know, he's great at his analysis. He and Kenny have a great rapport. We all get a lot, you know, and I know some people commented uh, when the news came out, like, oh, great. All I have to do is get into a rumble and throw a shoe, and like I can be hosting a television program too. It's well, more there's than, a little bit more than that. I mean, that is an important part of it. Obviously, I mean that is how Tom Brokaw first <laughs> broke in. Right, right, but there's right, a little right. bit more of you know there is a, a few little, other steps. Just a couple, yeah. and you know DC's been doing a lot with us, and uh, he, he really he really is good. You know, I'm excited for him. Um, at times, we'll also still have Brian Stan doing some things with us, and at times we're also going to have Michael Bisping, but uh, for now, I mean, you know, for overall permanently, it will be Daniel, and he's also going to have to take a little break, because he's got a small fight coming up in January. Who's that? Uh, yeah. John somebody. John somebody. Uh, but I'm excited for him. I, I, I want to congratulate him. It, it's going to be fun. He's good. like literally a lot of laughs on the set with him. Very he's a good cool. guy. And also, on Wednesday, so UFC Tonight is back on Wednesday. And also, we have the Ultimate Fighters back on again. There's been a bit of a drought for that. So, uh, the Ultimate Fighter champion will be crowned, uh, will be back on again on Wednesday. And I will be doing Tough Talk again afterwards. And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell you who's uh, my guest for this. But you'll definitely want to tune in. We may or may not be having more than one fighter on. We can just say it rhymes with Eonce. No. <laughs> That's all we can tell you. May or may not be having more than one fighter on, and may or may not be having, uh, well, people who know who, who's fighting this week. It's it's Felice versus Heather Joe Clark. This is uh, the least so, informative part of the show, you realize. What do you we, mean? We may or may not. Sometimes we have one. Sometimes we have two. Well. But when you say we may or may not, you might as <laughs> At any rate, okay. after the Ultimate Fighter airs, stick around for Tough stick Talk. Around. Tough Talk, which It'll... may or may not come after the <laughs> Ultimate Fighter, which may or may not be coming up. One thing I do know for sure is that we have Tyron Woodley, so why don't we... Why don't we dial up cool. T. Wood? Now, listen, he said, I, I gave him a wide range of time that we could do this interview, right? So he's like, yeah, 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 okay, well, you know, we, we can do this. Uh, I, I, I just hope that everything works out. That's all I'm going to say. It's going to work out. T. Wood is with us. Uh, stay with us. we got Tyron Woodley, number three welterweight in the UFC rankings. Hey, T. Wood, great to see you as always. Um, I know you're back in Missouri, but you were out here in L.A. I want to hear, first and foremost, i got to hear about this movie role that you've been doing on the NWA movie. How did that come together? Um, you know, a friend of mine was a coordinator for the uh, deal, and um, I told him, I said, if you don't put me in this movie you don't have a problem because you don't know anybody in your roster that's more hood than me that's from the hood that can do this and they sleep i say you got to put me in this movie so um he shot my head shot to stuff the director and they were kind of going back and forth um they switched my character a couple times but they found a world that fit me and i told i told my wife i i haven't sworn that much in my life it was like in one day it was that times 10 just just reliving, you know, some of the childhood things. I had to rethink. Like, some of that ghetto I buried so far down. 
and I had to dig down to bring it out. So, you know, I'm trying to get rid of it now. Well, it's funny because, you know, P- Pete has never met you before, but he was just like, that tyrant seems like a real upstanding citizen. Like a real, you know, like just a real solid guy. I think, um, I believe I said he seemed like a good guy. A I good mean, guy. Dude, that tyrant seemed like a real upstanding <laughs> citizen. I, uh, I don't think I I'm said just, those Well, words. whatever, but your meaning was that, you know. Yeah, I was watching a post-fight interview. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and you let the other guy talk to his fans, which was totally cool. Yeah, he's like a that. classic but, guy. He's a real outstanding. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't think that was a bad thing to say. <laughs> Whatever. So, what kind of role do you have then? So, you're are you playing like a drug dealer? What are you playing? A gangbanger? Um, you know, I'm playing one of the guys from the Lynch Mob. So, Lynch oh. Mob is a rap group. Yeah. That um, Ice Cube was a part of. Right. And I can't get all in, in depth on what I do and whatever, but I'm one of the one of the guys in the Lynch Mob. So, I mean. As far as the the filming part, I was in quite a few scenes. Yeah. Um, I had a little bit of dialogue. I mean, I don't have like a role where I'm like talking the whole movie, but right. it's a few times where I say things, and I, I don't know how they're gonna cut it. So when I see the movie, um, I'm be I'm gonna be just as surprised as you guys because I didn't know the entire script, yeah. everything that was happening. So. I mean, for what I saw, it was going to be a phenomenal movie. Nice. Well, so you get you get to just like look look t- look tough in the background a lot, a lot of like yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty 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 good the whole movie. Nice, nice. That's 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 pretty much the whole thing. A lot of times I had the you should not realize people that have, um, want to be in. Oh, I want to be an actor. I want to yeah. be this. I want to be that. You don't realize how hard it is because yeah. you can watch the movie Friday. Mm-hmm. And you can repeat every line from the movie Friday. And you can sound just like Chris Tucker, yeah. but Chris Tucker didn't have Chris Tucker to do that. He had a piece of paper, right. or he improv. He had to make it come to life. So people don't realize how how hard it is. Like you watch Denzel, and he's sitting in a coffee shop, and he's moving his head a certain way, and he's looking, and he's he's not saying anything. But the way you got to act, when you don't even say words. Mm-hmm. It's like thirty seconds is a lifetime. So <laughs> yeah. I found that kind of funny that you know just kind of standing there and, and, and being in the mood, the camera right on your face. But you don't have any words to say. Right. So you got to kind of like say it with your action. So I mean, hopefully I don't look silly. I don't know. I'm sure you're going to be great. And was that your first time do, doing any acting? Uh, yeah, that was my first time that I actually was in an acting role with parts of stunts. Usually I'm in a stunt role. Yeah. And then sometimes I might have to stay a line or so. But this time it was like I only had one day of stunts. It was like, you know, right. just one day of that and everything else was just pretty much being like a principal actor, you know, filling a the, filling the boy. And, um, it was a cool experience, you know. I got to work with F. Gary Gray. Nice. Who at the end of the movie, he said, you know, he said, "You my boy. You did a good job." So it was just really cool, you know. He's talking about UFC on the set. Yeah. So it was really awesome. Nice. So now we'll see them all in the front row of your next fight, then, right? Yeah. You know, I told them, I said, you know, if you guys want to go to a UFC fight, you got to let us know because, yeah. you know, guys like him and I'm on set and talking with Dr. Dre yeah. and Ice Cube. You don't realize how, how how these people are real big fans of the UFC. Yeah. You know, I just I, I I would think they would have no clue about it, but he said he wants to um, you know come watch and fight, and I told him it wouldn't be a bad idea to even advertise on the canvas, and, you yeah. know, the, the week of fight coming out. And I might have to walk out with a straight out of Compton hat. Who no, knows? that'd be so cool. Well, I know somebody. I know this. There's this one chick uh, who does interviews, uh, who used to interview celebrities and stuff like that. Who would love to talk to those guys about. UFC and making move. I wonder who that could be. You know, it's, it's a, I think her name begins with a K. And yeah, I think God, it's so weird. I'll think of it. I'll think of it. Um, it's actually funny. When I was seeing a, a couple weeks ago, I went. Uh, my mom is moving. And I went and I got some of my old uh, what is, shows. Is, is I just got it. You, you were just. About yourself. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Um, so I actually, I interviewed Ice Cube years ago, uh, and so that's one of the tapes that I brought back the other day, so I need to digitize that, because I even remember, I mean, this was, this was back in the 90s or something, and I just remember when he came in, we, I mean, everybody was bugging, like, he, he's just so cool, you know, so I'm, I'm Wait, I mean, you gotta be cool to have a nickname Ice Cube. Yeah, totally. Because, I mean, like... I mean that like just it defines would not work it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on, you know on me. That's no. like calling yourself like Le- lemon wedge. You know you gotta right. be like you gotta be able to pull that off. You're right. Uh, you do. So now I remember T would too. You came in one time when I was at Fox and you came in. You were you had just had an audition. So was it for this that that you auditioned because you were trying to be a game? Oh, uh, you know the, the funny thing is I went to audition for gang related. Oh, okay. So gang related. Yeah, my friend actually. And they had me audition for a crackhead. I'm like, I'm the most swollen, totally... crackhead you ever meet in your life. I said, 
I, I told the guy, I'm like, why don't I just cast him for a drug dealer? Right. You know, why don't you cast him to one of the gang members or something like that? Yeah. And it was just, I had to go in and I said, you know what, I'm taking this experience. Because don't take this the wrong way. But I looked out, and I'm like, that's spooky right there. <laughs> I'm like, he is, he's getting the spot. He, he, he don't even have to speak English. No, no, oh, no. That person is getting this role. <laughs> so I, I knew I wasn't going to get that, but yeah. it was just, you know, when you audition and you cast, it's the nerves and the butterflies and getting yeah. comfortable with the camera and kind of trying to read the directors. That's hard. You know, yes. a lot of times, you that's where you're going to actually get the spot at, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, it's funny because I remember what I said to you, too. I said... That as you could use that nervousness though, like gang gang guys, like a lot of time I think inter- their internal monologue is a little bit nervous. You know what I mean? Like They're I feel like nervous. it's something that you could actually incorporate into the role. You know, a lot of people don't realize it, it, that it's the most nervous because they're like, oh, it's going to go down, or you know, most people that have guns and willing to use them, they're scared to actually face their problems. They're scared mm-hmm. to actually maybe this person can beat me up. So mm-hmm. they're really mm-hmm. to, to take the easy way out is. Sometimes you're shooting a person, yeah. you know. Jeez. So I, I I just remember when I was a young kid, and if I was about to get into a fight or I thought a fight was about to get off, I was nervous. I was actually really nervous. Right, right. Now you said you did stunt doubling. Who did you do it for? Any anybody that we would know? Yeah, I stunt double Barry Sanders. They, so if you ever see a Pepsi, I did a Pepsi commercial. It was Pepsi. Let me get out the sunlight. It was Pepsi, and then it was on um, EA Sports for the Madden with the Madden um, 25. Nice. So he was in a barbershop scene, and they were talking to Axon why he retired. Yeah. Then they twisted cast, and he pops in another room. Right. He didn't pop in another room. I popped in the nice. room through a table, and like 12 foot from the um, from the from the ceiling. So it was a cool experience. He knew Daniel Cormier because they both went yeah. to um, Oklahoma State. So he was he said, "Yeah, you know um, who's Daniel Cormier?" Because you know, I was Oklahoma State too, and I've been watching him. And he's doing yeah. well. It's just one thing I found out in the, in the entertainment world how big Mitch Martial Arts is. How many people are watching it? How many people appreciate it? And I don't expect them to know who I am. Like I want to. A friend of mine is um, Arnold. You know Arnold. Arnold Chong is a friend of mine. Yeah. He wants to go to Michael John White's house and watch yep. um, the Mayweather fight. Nice. All these actors, Robert Townsend, and I can, there was 30 people I knew but didn't know their names. Yeah. They all watched my fights. They all knew who I was. And I'm like, how do you know me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? And I think it's, it's kind of cool that we, we get so caught up in training and fighting and doing interviews. We don't ever get to enjoy the moment, enjoy the journey. Yeah. This is pretty unique. We're at like the beginning stage of mixed martial arts. It's only 20 years deep, almost 21 years deep. And we're like right in the beginning of it. Right, the cusp. No, it's great. It's great. And then another thing I know that you've been doing lately, you were out here. Um, we were talking, uh, Pete and I were talking before about, uh, I was telling him that you were from Ferguson. So what were you doing here recently, right? Because you came and you spoke at a conference. You know, was that the two different things, that conference and uh, the situation in Ferguson, or do they do they overlap? You know, it's funny because they, they were completely coincidental. Mm-hmm. So I was in Santa Monica. Um, doing a conference with a, it's a membership software called MindBody, they're one of my sponsors. Mm-hmm. So I'm like their ambassador for the company. We have the product at our gym, we use it for our membership. Right. They asked me um, in July, they asked me to come out and talk to some of their um, clients about when it was the right time to get back. Mm-hmm. So this was set in July. Okay. So the topic they had me speak on, when, when do you know it's time to get back? You know, they probably got the best talk or speech I'll ever give because I would have never been more passionate than now because for me, now it's not for me to get back. Yeah. And, you know, it's unfortunate that Ferguson, the whole situation, and, and what had to happen for people to start coming together as a community. But for me, it's like a lot of my efforts are going towards that, you know, mm-hmm. almost more than more than fighting the training at this point. And I'm really focused, you know, using celebrity that I have, any kind of platform that I may be able to reach, to use all of that to try to exemplify the positive part of Ferguson. I lived in the hood in Ferguson, mm-hmm. and I lived in the nice spot in Ferguson where people had my key to my house, and we knew them, and you know we had functions together. So I don't want the community, one, nobody would have ever known what Ferguson was. Mm-hmm. If you look at my strike force fight, you can see the coming out of Ferguson, Missouri. Yeah. You know what I did? I'm like, nobody knows 
I changed it to St. Louis. St. Louis, yeah. But what are you doing uh, to help? You know, how, how are you planning to kind of use your celebrity and your position to at least make an impact or try to try to change some opinions or try to get something started? Um, you know, I think what we could easily say is that, hey, you know, when this happened, all the police officers need to have GoPro cameras. They need to change their, you know, the, the protocol that they use when they actually use force. Yeah. This was excessive force. They should change that. We need that we need to fire the the, uh, the the sheriff. We can do that, but as as citizens, how do we do that? Yeah. How do we walk in there and make them do something? We can't do that. It's not our job to enforce the law, so we can't walk in there and enforce the law on law enforcers. But what we can do is we can look at ourselves. We can actually go out and vote more because most of these people are put in position through voting. Yeah. So we can actually get get more active in the uh, voting community, and we really can just look at ourselves like it's not the school district's job to raise your kids it's your job to raise your own kids so you can't have your kids like i know as a parent i do this too if you keep backing up you do i need to call the police i'm gonna call the police on you so we do it it sounds like a joke to get yeah. them to act right yeah but it's really painting a bad picture from from a youth that the police are the bad guys and they're against us. Yeah, yeah. I'll be still, oh, look, the police right there, don't, don't let me call the police. Right. But we do that already as a joke away without even thinking that, you know what, we're really the police officers in the wrong light because one, yeah. I feel for a heroic job, you know, that supposed to save and protect, mm -hmm. they don't get paid enough to do that. Yeah. You think a professional athlete like myself or, you know, Somebody on a bigger, bigger scale, like someone like LeBron James, yeah. they make these millions and millions of dollars, and they're put on this pedestal by people as, as you know these heroes. But you got firefighters and police officers. I mean, firefighters get a little bit more prestige than, than um, police officers, yeah, they but they're not really, really put in that pedestal. Yeah. They're actually the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy could have been upset, mad, been issued on traffic duty. You know, had three weeks straight with these kids were freaking not even listening. So I'm like, why do I even have a badge? I can't even get the respect to the people. And I'm not taking up because my, my whole mission is not to focus on the case, but focus on the call. Because I wasn't there. You wasn't there. We can all, you know, the person that got shot is dead. They can't testify on their own behalf. But I can tell you, if we don't change things, this will happen over and over again. It happened again. Two weeks later, no, not, not two weeks later, uh, about, about three weeks ago, in South St. Louis, a, a police officer shot a kid down. They said the kid had a weapon. He was shooting at him. Mm -hmm. No matter who fought it was, the no respect for life, self value, police profiling, kids disrespecting the law, all those things are gonna make this continue to happen over and over again. Mm -hmm. Like what happens when when they go to trial? What if they say not guilty? Right, right. Then it's gonna be right. down. Yeah. They're gonna tear it down. Uh uh. Because when I drive down first, I'm going there. To, I, I, I'm actually going there tomorrow. So I don't want to drive down that street. It keeps seeing these boarded up, you know, boarded up windows and you know, freaking products all over the street. Yeah. You know, that was that was a sad day for me. You know, I didn't. I don't want to see my neighborhood like that. I don't want to see people like their mindset. Hey, somebody did something wrong. Let me do something worse, even though it's not going to even change the outcome. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I understand protesting. I understand being like like um, who said it? Um, Al Sharpton said that if you are, you can be a fool and be out there writing, but you're an activist, that means that you just want to stand for anything that's wrong, whether it's an African-American versus African-American yeah. being wrong, whether an uh, activist means that this is wrong, I'm not going to stand for it. Yeah. I'm not against that. Even the parents, the parents aren't against, um, you know, lobbying, rallying it up, doing a, um, you know, honoring her son. But they are against the looting and the rioting and the violence. Yeah. Most of those people don't even live in Ferguson. Why are you going to come from North St. Louis or South St. Louis and come to my, my city and bust it up and just find a way to steal product from people's mm -hmm. stores? You know what I mean? So like, who cares? They got insurance. Some of the, I mean, some people don't have riot insurance. Yeah. So now they, you're stealing air conditioning units. Riot insurance. That's crazy. No, I, I mean, I, you know, I like where you were. Did we lose him? No, you're there, right? Yeah, we should be good now. I'm on a, a, a less rural street, and we actually are um, two minutes away from Wi-Fi. So All right, cool. So, what, so what are you going to say, Pete? No, I was going to say is, you know, I I like hearing what you were saying about the people that you grew up with and what they were doing now. 
Because I always think that that's really important to kind of bring back to the schools. It, I mean, and it's great to have a world class a- 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 athlete come back, but most kids don't have a chance in hell to be a world class athlete. So it's even nicer when you have like an engineer come mm-hmm. back or or somebody saying like, "This is the path I I started where you are, and here's the path that I took mm-hmm. to um, you know to get here." And it's not an impossible path. Yeah, you know, it's not like. Yeah. I picked up a basketball and became the world's greatest right. basketball right. player. Right. So you can do it. You can too. do. Yeah. It's like, well, no, probably not. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I was listening to a motivational speaker, and he said, "Nobody said it was easy. We just said it was possible. Right. Yeah. It's not going to be easy, but it's possible. Like I think, you know, I got a mentoring program in um, East St. Louis mm-hmm. uh, where we mentor them, talk to them about God, talk to them about religion." We talk to them about, you know, being a good citizen. We do, uh, basically get them ready for life. Yeah. My whole message to them is life is not easy. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you somebody owe you something. The man is not holding you down. You got your own hands. You hold yourself down. This environment, this neighborhood you're living in, you don't have to become that. You might not get a million opportunities. You might not get a ton of people that are willing to help you out. You might get one, but when you get that one, you better grab it like you never grabbed nothing in your life. You better use it to be successful because at the end of the day, you're going to watch a lot of people, you know, just think about all the athletes that get chance after chance after chance after chance, and they find a way to ruin it. Or, you know, even an actor or somebody that just can't shake something, they get all these opportunities and these blessings, they don't make the best of it. you got to make the best of every single opportunity you get. And I think that's that's really my message yet, that it. I'm bringing in myself. Um, Andre Ward's going to come in. Nice. He's from Oakland, California. You yeah. know, from the, the rough for the rough, but he's yeah. an undefeated boxer, Olympic gold medalist, world champion, in the top five pound for pound. I'm getting Maurice Claret to come in, who freaking led Ohio State to a freaking undefeated season. Nice. Had one year off, then he freaking went to jail. His whole career was over, but yeah. now he's talking to kids, doing camps. I'm bringing in Bone, who's one of the most Victoria's Bloods in South Central in really? Compton. He freaking was in the movie Training Day. I met him on a set of Straight Out of Compton. He said, "Hey man, let me know when you need me. I'm there." Wow. So people want to get out there and they want to show you that hey, I was in this neighborhood. I'm a professional athlete now. I'm an engineer now. I got an ex rapper. I mean, a rapper that was one of the, the most um, notorious drug dealers in mm-hmm. St. Louis. But he got saved by God. Now he's a Christian rap artist, and I walk out to his song yeah. every time I fight. So when you think about the different messages that each person brings, in addition to being from the area, in addition to having a, you know, the celebrity that you might see this person on television, I think that's the way that I can best do it. We're going to get in the community. We're going to do a community event. Um, I'm on a, like, 30-school tour right now. I've already done three or four. I do one tomorrow, one at the end of the week. Then we're doing a community event. Then we're going to actually sponsor four to six actual teams because that's the second outlet, athletics. Yeah. So we're going to go out and we're going to help sponsor some football, basketball, whatever the community is doing in athletics. We're going to go out there and show ourselves three different times. And we're going to make this a continual. Not come in, get you all pumped up, you know, make you all warm and fuzzy, hair set up on the back of your neck, then leave you. Mm-hmm. Then after that, that, that initial buzz leave, you're going to go back to doing the, the same thing. We're going to make this a continual process. Yeah. Counter, you know, work with the um, educators, piggyback with them, come in and talk about teen pregnancy, bullying, you know, college preparation, mock interviews, real life, life skills, and prepare these kids for life. So the mindset that they have won't be like the generation that's, that we're in right now. I don't know if I can go back and try to save 30-year-old men and 25-year-old women. They're kind of where they're at. But I can go to the elementary, the middle school, in the high schools and try to save the next generation behind us because if it gets worse, man, I don't know what we're going to do. This is pretty bad now. Yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that and and thank you. You know, certainly thank you for, for doing that. Um, you know, obviously I need to talk to you about your fighting as well. Oh, I uh, forgot about that. Yeah, there's always, there's, <laughs> there's always the fighting. So I was telling Pete because uh, he, he didn't see the, the fight in Macau but he was able to, I'm like, just look it up. I'm like, you have time. Because it doesn't take that long. <laughs> I saw a couple short knockouts yeah, yeah. over the last two years. Yeah, it was probably the Jay Haran one was probably yeah, in there yeah, that he said uh, as well. I mean, for a wrestler, you've got a hell of a punch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. 
So how good did that last one feel, uh, going to Macau and getting that done that quickly? How good was that? You know, it felt good because, you know, I was in Singapore. Me and Avery was on, you know, like a vacation. I said, you know what, we're going to go out here and relax. You got an opportunity to go out and train to Evolve MMA. And I was in chill mode. I was training, thank God. Mm -hmm. I was there training, doing seminars. And it was three or four days after my fight. Right. No, no, it was in um, Singapore. Oh, Singapore, Singapore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was there literally three days after I fought Rory. Then Dana coughed and said, hey, man, you know, I ain't going to use his exact words, <laughs> yeah. but pretty much he needed my help. Yeah. He was in a situation. He had a press conference in one hour, and he needed to be able to tell them that he had a replacement for Dong Young Kim. Yeah. So what I did, I said, well, let me train real quick. So I'm going to go train, and I want to see how I felt and where I thought my condition was at because I had to take this fight in like seven, I had like seven weeks or something right. like that. So um, I called him. I said, all right, I'm in. I'll take the fight. Nice. Because if he wouldn't have called me, then, if I would have been in Asia, yeah. it would have been 3 a.m., and I definitely would have been asleep. Right. I would have never been able to seize the moment and redeem myself after a, a defeat. Yeah. So I, I took it because I needed to redeem myself. I knew I was capable of more, right. and um, I wanted to go out there and show that. Nice. Now, with the, with the Rory fight redeeming yourself, you know, when you look back on that, do you see, was there something that didn't go right in camp, or was there something that night that... Uh, in your mindset or something that was just different from other fights because the, the difference in you you know what I mean it's like it's so clear sometimes when you watch one fight where you win and one where you don't you're like you're two totally different guys sometimes yeah well for me it was um, the camp was awesome you know yeah. the training was great um, I was in great shape I was prepared there's nothing that he did that I wasn't prepared for it mm-hmm. actually surprised me because you know you watch Rory on top, I believe Rory in our division probably has the best ground and pound yeah. and finishing abilities for top. It's very hard to finish on one from top. Mm-hmm. And you see, you know, he just you know, finished Tarek Chaffini at the end, finished from top. But as far as the punching um, on your feet, he didn't have a ton of power, and I was surprised by that because I thought if he's able to punch that hard um, when he's in a top position, that he would have natural punching power on his feet. Because yeah. it, it's hard to generate a lot of power from top. Yeah. You know, creating that space, getting your hands free, right. and actually landing good punches. So I, I think, you know, if I would have fought on Friday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, um, I think it would have just been, if I fight him 10 out of, you know, 9 out of 10 times, I think it would be different outcomes. I think yeah. it would be a different person. I just had a bad night. I don't have a ton of excuses for it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I didn't take anything from him. I didn't, you know, try to make excuses for right. the way he went out there performing because at the end of the day, he had to go out there. Mm-hmm. He had to know what I was capable of doing and have a game plan to stop me from doing that, stick to the game plan, and find a way to win the fight, you know, especially with all everything on the stake. So yeah. hats off to him, but I, I got to feel a little to each other in the near future. So now do you think, though, that he that he's earned the next shot at whoever wins between Johnny and Robbie? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I think he's earned a shot. I think he's earned a shot for, um, you know, the only thing that's going to put a kink in that is if Robbie wins. Right. Robbie because- wins it. They have, to, they have to run it back because – you know, Johnny won, Robbie won. Yeah. I think it's a it's a big southpaw, heavy hitting, you know, fight. Cool. We we've, uh, we've had to struggle through this interview. I right? know, I know. So listen, <laughs> I want to pick up from where you were saying though. So you think that if Robbie Lawler wins, they're going to go for three fights for Johnny and yeah. Robbie because it's one to one. So you think Rory would have to wait? I think they're gonna have to. I think they're gonna have to fight again, yeah. and I think that in the meantime, if Roy's just sitting around, he don't want to get all rusty, and he needs a fight, then I think me and him can fight again. So you would take the rematch because basically, you know, it, it comes down to there's not a lot of guys to fight. Obviously, when you're no. at the top of the division, it, it gets a little tricky. So you need to fight, though. You don't want to just stay on the side, right? Or do you? Do you yeah. Where do you? No, I don't want to stay on the side, but this is what I think. I think it's. I think it's chess, not checkers. I think it has to make sense for me, mm-hmm. the person I fight. I think, you know, somebody said to me on the internet, like, I've been troll smashing. Her oh, lady. you know people have been so, all over so, you. So people have been all over me. So a dude was like, you know, you should take this fight. The fans want to see it. I said, I said, okay, I want you to quit your job of 20 years as right. a post office, whatever you do, and I want you to open up a lemonade stand. <laughs> what? I like lemonade, so I want you to open up a lemonade stand because I like lemonade. I said, this ain't the fight to the death garage fights anymore. This ain't, right. like, we appreciate you as fans, but as a fighter, I fight for God, I fight for my wife, yeah. I fight for my family. 
Then I fight for my legacy. Then I fight for my team. The money and the fans come after that. So for me, that's not my motivation. Right. And I know who I am as a person. I know that I've never ran from a fight. My last three fights, by the way, have been on short notice. Yeah. So I've been the one that's always stepped up to the occasion. And it got to make sense for me. So if I'm fighting Matt Brown, who was supposed to, you know, if he would have beat Robbie, he would have mm -hmm. had a title shot. That makes sense to me. Or Carlos. Or yeah. if GSP comes back and he's ready to get in there and he don't get an immediate title shot, that fight makes sense to me because that puts me right in the picture yeah. of fighting for a world title. You can't take random fights because everybody in our division is really good. Mm -hmm. Killers, animals. And if you're going to be out there in a risky fight, the reward got to match you. You got to put me right in a position. So, so now, is, well, you're right, but isn't isn't Matt, Matt's going to be out a little while, right, with a hand injury? Oh, uh, I don't know for sure. I, when, I, when, I, when I mentioned it, they asked me who... Because you know me, I'm not a person that's going to call nobody out. Right. They asked me what fights made sense to me. So I'm thinking, I'm actually a fan of the way he fights. He's freaking nuts. Yeah, yeah. He, he never, he like, Immortal is the best nickname he can have. Yeah, yeah, So no, I actually right? like to watch Matt Brown fight, and he knows that. Yeah. So he didn't take it as, hey, Tyron's calling me out. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense. As martial artists, I like to compete against other martial artists. Yeah. I enjoy competing against Carlos Condit yeah. because to that date, he was the person I enjoy watching yeah. the most as a fighter. I enjoy watching him more than any other UFC fighter. Mm -hmm. So when I got a chance to measure myself against him and compete against him, it was an honor. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So I think Matt Brown's the same way. He's going to come out there. He's pretty much going to fight the same way. Everything he got to the last drip, to the last second. Mm -hmm. I think those type of fighters and fights bring the best out of me. And it puts me in a position where I'm probably going to be in a fight in a nice type of situation. Yeah. I'm probably going to be talked about for fighting for the next world title. You know, just think about him. He went out and, you know, he had a slow start in the fight against mm -hmm. Eric Silva. It came together to be a crazy yeah, fight. He did. You know, everybody was talking about it. You know, it's been one of the better fights of the year. And then beating the number 12 guy bumped him up all the way to number five yeah. and got him a fight against uh, Robbie Lawler, which would have put him in a title shot. Why wouldn't you want to be in fights like that? Yeah. You know what I mean? With people with a lot of buzz. So for me, it got to make sense. You know, I hear George St. Pierre is coming back. Um, I, I would like to be interested in what they, what they plan on doing for him because if anybody, you can't, you can't lead a sport knowing that this guy has been on the throne that long, has achieved so much stuff, and you not compete against right. him and not measure yourself against him. So if I had a choice between fighting Johnny and GSP right now, right. I would probably take the fight against GSP. GSP. But do you really think he's going to come back? I don't think he sh needs to. I don't think he should. I think his legacy is left. I think yeah. he's done everything. He's went through the specialists, the guys that just do jiu-jitsu, the guys yeah. that are just wrestlers, the guys that can put a little bit together like Koshek and Hardy. Mm -hmm. And, man, look at his – even his first two fights before the UFC, if you look at those two guys' records, those guys are like 20-something in three. So he's never had an easy fight. Yeah. I think he's pretty much dominated everybody. Even when he lost to Matt Sarri, he came through and mm -hmm. won X amount of fights after that. Yeah. If he wants to come back, then hats off to him. I would love to, you know, the opportunity to compete against him. If he doesn't, I don't think anybody can say anything bad about him. The dude is the, the most dominant champion we've ever seen. Yeah, I don't think he has anything left to prove either. It's, it's that kind of toss-up between selfishness where I like, I like GSP fights. You know what I mean? And like you said, it'd be amazing to watch you guys fight, but I actually don't think he has anything to prove. It's just my question yeah. is, he's such a competitive person, obviously ha had been such a high-level competitor. Like, I just wonder, what is he going to do now if, if he doesn't fight anymore? Like, where will he find that outlet? Because I feel like he's proven to be such a, such a top-level athlete. I just i am curious what he would do next. Um, you know, I think he can he can do something in apparel. I think he can do something in film. Yeah. Um, you know, I watched. I finally got a chance to watch this uh, piece on Captain America. Yeah, he was good. He can, yeah, he was good. He was good. Some some um, athletes don't transition very well. You know, yeah. they, they get into the acting role. And like, damn it, he was terrible. But um, right. I, I thought he, I thought he did good. I thought he was a good villain. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know his financial state. I know he made a lot of money. I don't know yeah. what he saved. If he's put into other businesses. But I think if anybody's in a good position to see what's next, I think he's, he's one of those guys. Yeah. So now, right now, are you at your gym? Is that, or is that where you are now? You said what? Are you at your gym now? Yeah, I'm at my gym now. All right. Nice. So, um, so I mean, is it hard to work out when you don't really have a, a specific opponent in mind? Or how soon do you think, you know, you would fight? Um, For me... 
when you don't have an opponent in mind, it is hard to get motivated yeah. in what to, what areas of your weaknesses you want to work. When right. you're fighting someone like sales fighting Johnny, mm -hmm. you know, obviously I'm going to bring in the best wrestlers I can bring in. I'm going to bring in some heavy hidden southpaws. Yeah. I know what areas a, a, a heavy handed wrestling southpaw. I know what areas of weakness I can't have exploited. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get on those immediately. But really and honestly, as, as fighters, and I think that's what made GSP so good and some of the other fighters so good, of just growing as a fighter in between fights, mm -hmm. training to get better, not training for a fight camp. You know, I had to take some time off because I had three fight camps back to back. Forget the fights. Yeah. You know, I fought November, I fought March, I fought June, I fought August. They wanted me to fight in November. Then they called me back and they wanted me to fight in December. I'm like, dude, I haven't seen my sons. My 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 three year old asked me when can he go to my house. You know what oh, I mean? It was like, I was like, uh, oh. time out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so so you know, my family's you know been been great. They've been yeah. you know really good at sacrificing and knowing what I'm doing. And in between fighting, I'm out doing seminars. I'm mm -hmm. out doing stunt work. I was out for four weeks doing the movie Straight Out of Compton. Yeah. I did an episode of Sons of Anarchy. Nice. So I'm staying busy, and you know it's all positive stuff. But sometimes you know I get home and like right now my throat's itching because I've been trying to clean and freaking dust and do all this other stuff because I feel like I'm gone so much and now my body's all all beat up. <laughs> oh no, no. Well. So right now I'm just I'm just get back in shape to be honest. Get yeah. back in shape. Before I start talking about fighting anybody, because if I had to fight tomorrow, I would be looking for the knockout because yeah, yeah, nice. I, ain't, I ain't in fight shape right now. You're not going. You're not going through yeah. your five rounds. So, oh, the beard no. is the beard indicative of where you are in training camp too. Exactly, <laughs> the beginning stages. Because I didn't have to shave it all the way off, but if you can tell, yeah. this part is the frame. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, part yeah. is where they had me at. So now I gotta. Right. Trim this, trim that down, and let it come together. So, well, you can, well, you can go for the mutton chops. You know, you can. Oh, I gotta have facial hair. I realized that about myself. Like what? when I did Olympus is Fallen, I shaved my facial hair off. I look terrible. Yeah, I, I look like Ch I look like Chester. I look like the dirty <laughs> uncle. <laughs> That's funny. That's cool. Well, T. What? Thank you for taking the time today, and uh, hopefully they'll have an announcement soon, and we'll know who you're gonna fight. But. Um, but in the meantime, enjoy the family. What are they? What are they going to be for Halloween? Are they going to dress up? Um, the Ninja Turtles. And let me see. Let me see my wife costume. Where's your costume at? Uh oh. She shot it. They're going to be pirates. Oh yeah. So my wife's going to be a pirate. My kids are going to be Ninja Turtles, and I haven't decided what I'm going to be. No. At. No. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to be. Do you know what you're going to do? I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aurora, Aurora went with the zombie this year, like a zombie right. prom queen, because I. She she last year she was um, the girl from uh, Merida from from Brave you know she has red hair curly hair it was like easy um, but this year she, you know she's getting a little older and now she wanted to be kind of like a zo a zombie so it's like how old a, how old is your daughter eight is that crazy my six year old is watching The Walking Dead oh no no why yes. would you let him do that well I didn't know what it was he had this tablet he was watching Netflix dude and now he's like. Oh, I love watching The Walking Dead. Dude, they play, like, zombie games. It's like it's like intense. Well, it's called The Walking Dead. Yeah, but I, mean, yeah, well, I don't even watch that show. Right, that's going to give you a little bit of a clue. Yeah. That's not yeah. Dude, you need to back that up. That's that's <laughs> not... That is... Uh, well, they already watched. You, you need to get him in therapy now. He's got a little he bit. Told, of, he's got some stuff he this, needs to this what he told me. He told me yesterday. He said, "Yeah, my auntie's on season six, so I got to catch up." No, so I'm, on ne I'm on Netflix and I watched the first season. This is a six year old, dude. He told me this yesterday. He watched the first season. He got to catch up. Tyron, you need you need some home time with the son because that is that is not okay. Well, that's what we just said. I have never seen it, so I don't even know what it is. Uh, dude, it's really violent. Like I don't watch it because wait a watch like it, and, he, and, he, and he's into it and he tells me some stuff I go I, uh, 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 I don't want to hear it I don't want to hear it it's crazy violent so they're like cursing and like nudity and all that stuff it's, it's, it's like neck slashing goring zombies coming in one mom has to like kill her own baby because it's gonna get turned damn not okay <laughs> Yeah, he's well. That's what he's doing, and he's playing all these zombie games on his phone too. On his, he got this like tablet, so he's like watching on yeah. Netflix. Well, and he's playing all these zombie games, like Dead Walkers or something like that, on his on his tablet. There, there, no, there's one zombie game that Aurora plays. It's like zombies versus like flower, like like 
It's weird. That one I don't mind. It's like an innocent. Oh, you're not... talking about the the garden game. Yeah, that that that's, yeah. that's okay. And we have a, we have a PlayStation game at home. Wade and I'll play. But it, like literally after she goes to bed, where we blow some zombies away. But that's about as far as I go. She she <laughs> no. There's no zombieing for her. But anyway, this is like a a little cute like zombie prom queen. But even I was kind of hesitant. Like oh, she's crossing. Oh no. Now, well, I told you, I told you, I needed to get home. It's daddy time. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, you do, man. That's like some. That's that's not good. <laughs> just watch an episode. And you're gonna be. Oh hell no. Well, I'm gonna watch one today just because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not gonna be good. Oh my god. All right. Well, Tyron, thanks for uh, talking with us today. Um, I hope to see you soon. No, I know you've been out here in LA. You've been training at Wildcard when you've been here, right? Yeah, I've been training at Wildcard. And is that going well? It's going well. It's going well. I talk actually. I talked to Eric Brown yeah. about taking a more aggressive um, stance and like my coaching. You yeah. know, Dean Dean Thomas is my chief second, but right. you know, as far as like the run and the conditioning, the yeah. rounds, the uh, I want him to when I'm in LA to kind of grab me by the horn. I'm actually thinking about um, grabbing a spot out in LA, um, taking taking one of my vehicles out there because I've been spending so much money just in hotels yep. and rental cars. Yep. And if I'm gonna be out there training, if I'm gonna be out there in movies, that you know, uh, I think I'm gonna just rent out a little spot and um, get my get my 2006 Nissan Altima out there so I can have nice. some wheels. No, that'd be cool. Well, also, you know, over at Wildcard, you know how our buddy Justin, who we introduced you to before, Justin Fortune, is back with Freddie Roach training Manny Pacquiao and doing all the strength and conditioning heard. there. So there's definitely a lot of wisdom out here, you know, yeah. for you to, to a get. Lot, a lot of actors know him. Like when I was on the set, yeah. a lot of actors were telling me about working with him. Like the yeah. dude that. Um, See, I was about to give away. I was about to get beat up by Universal Films. Uh-oh, uh-oh. One of the actors in the movie is playing a significant role, which I can't tell you. Yeah. He trained with Justin. He was talking about his boxing and how he enjoys yeah. it. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to do some deductive reasoning there because I know uh, sometimes I walk up to the gym, and the cool thing about Fortune Gym is there's a, it is celeb heavy, but it's not like, oh, my God, there's celebs here. Everybody's there just working out. But there are some real high-level actors in there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a cool spot and Justin's a great guy. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to get up there next time and check man Sars out as well. Yep. Get my jujitsu game. Yeah, online, Lars is know. awesome. So that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great. Well, cool, Tyron. Thank you so much and uh, and you keep in touch and hopefully we'll see you out here soon. All right. Thank you guys for putting up with all those uh, breaks yeah. in communication. <laughs> no, that's cool. All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. All right. All right so that's the first time you got to meet T Wood. Very impressive guy. Is that still Very. an okay nickname now, or is it still questionable now that you know the man, the myth, the legend that is T-Wood? Well, no. I mean, listen, the, the nickname's great. It's just, <laughs> you know, Wood, and then yes. T-Wood, and then you're like, so, you know, so what is that? Is that like some, like, you know, I... It, uh, it, it's a great nickname. It so is. First of all, a guy with the last name... Coming shouldn't really be talking about <laughs> really anything. So I'm actually going to retract the first my comment. Throw stones. My comment. Uh, I know I'm excited to see him in this movie. Like, I think it's I think that's cool. I, I'm really and the thing of what I like about Tyron is that when he commits to something, like he really. Right. prepares and goes for it. So yeah. I don't think he's going to be a guy that's just like, hey, yeah, now I'm an actor too. I think he'll actually do the right things and take the right steps and take the classes. And I mean, just listening to the interview, you could see the respect that he had oh, yeah. for actors. And, yeah. that, um, and that's really impressive when you have someone who's at such a high level mm -hmm. of something like a fight game, you know, having respect, you know, I mean, you know, for the acting. Yeah. And I did like to hear how he got the role. He basically, you know, <laughs> went in and said, I got to be in this movie. And they said... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that okay. doesn't work for most not, actors. Not, not, it not helps if you are number three. It in the does. It does. You, you know, as you go, I got to be in it. And they go, well, we'll let you know. Yeah. Why don't you drop off your headshot and go F yourself. But okay? you know what I will say this, Pete, and I've said this to other people, like with auditions or even, you know, any kind of job interview, it doesn't even have to be, you know, like a television audition or something. Like, let's say you want to go get a job at UPS and, you know, right. you go for your... Like, I've always tried to approach things like... They want you to be the answer. Do you know what right, I mean? Like, so right, don't. Right. Do, I think people go into situations like that nervous and oh, they're not going to like me and feeling like it's a little bit more um, uh, more conflict in there and like I got to really win this guy over. And I feel like I go into things going, I'm already winning because they want they want to be done. Like they want to pick the person and move on. Right. So I kind of go, go in there with the headspace of like, how can I? How can I already maintain the positive thing that I would like to believe they have about me and 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 instead of feeling like, oh, it's all stacked against me and I'm climbing up to, to win it. I don't know, that's just my headspace. I just go on and hope that they really don't delve into my resume too much <laughs> and actually don't 
recall the three references, which are my brother, <laughs> my mother, and my sister, all who have three different last names. Last names. names. So then I'm like, I, you know, last time I had to call my brother, and I'm like, yeah, listen, dude, I've been working, uh, I've been working for you for the last. Here's the storyline, right? Here's the story. Here's, Here's the setup. Here's the story. No, so uh, no, I like to go in, to, um, into an interview and just look the guy in the eye and go, "You're welcome." <laughs> And I find that gets me nowhere, actually. Absolutely. At the Thai food place we ate lunch at before we did this, they were hiring. Well, yeah. yeah. I, oh, yeah. I'd, be, I'd probably be just as effective at a Thai food place as I am talking about the UFC right here. By the way, I've been getting a lot of grief in the comments see, section for not... And See, here's my point. I think that me being new to the sport, I can perhaps point out things that people haven't already seen. You know, yes. so it's sort of like the Emperor's New Robe. It took that little boy to go like, the Emperor's he's naked. naked, he's not wearing anything. Yeah. Like, okay, I'll give you an example, right? Dana White missed a huge marketing opportunity. How so? Okay, boxing rings have four corners, right? Right. Octagon has what? Eight sides. Eight. What if he had six? What would it be called? The sexagon. <laughs> Imagine, imagine, and Ariana will now be walking into the sexagon for, come on, you get, uh, immediately you get three times as many Japanese businessmen. <laughs> You're, you've Is she even lowered. between rounds too? Is that? You know, now like 11 year old boys um, um, are now tuning in. Um, Is that a great idea though? To all creepy old guys. You, now, listen, I, listen, Dana White's been doing a great job. He dropped the ball there. The USC should have been fought in a sex again. Well, maybe Just now. Like, like the, some competitor will come up and steal that now. Oh, maybe. speaking of. He left himself wide open. Ultimate fighting championship? Yeah. I just write P-E-N next to it. Now I have the penultimate, penultimate. fighting championship. That ultimate. means next to last. I've already, you don't know. I've already got the domain name on GoDaddy. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Dana White can, obviously, um, can either pay me $400 for it or... Uh, I really, actually, really like that one. The <laughs> penultimate. You'd be like, oh! oh! No, I have the ultimate. How did you? You can't. No. Second That's best. right, baby. PFC. Oh, my God. And our fighters are better just by definition. That is awesome. Okay. So, so just just little things that, like, if I knew anything about the sport, I might not you have been able to, you know. So, it, it is, it's, you know, it's this little babe in the woods that I think maybe I can see the forest of the trees a little bit. You might bit. be right. You might be right. right. That's why we kick you around. That's why David Cox likes me, by the way. <laughs> David Cox. Man. I got Shout one guy. I got one guy in my comment section. <laughs> and the thing is, he seems to like me so much that it's triggering my low self-esteem. <laughs> so now I think he might be a stalker. No! No, well, no, because, like, I've never had anyone actually like me enough to write, like, three nice, nice things. things. I mean, he said more nice things about me in one week than my mom has said, uh... Basically, in my entire life. So now, like, I get in the car and I just check the back seat to make sure that, like, you know, David Cox doesn't pop out with a knife. You know, or he's not going to be like, I wrote five nice things about you. You said nothing about me. I thought we were friends. No. So. Background now. Oh, no, shout out to David Cox. Yeah, no, I know. He's, my buddy. You my know, buddy. Pete, Pete, Pete makes jokes. In the yeah. background now, all I can think of is that Eminem song, Stan, where all he does is keep writing the letters. Dear, and then and he, he starts to, like, freak out him and then it's just that he Eminem just didn't have time to answer the rec- answer the letter and and it, and he's not being a jerk he just didn't have time no I'm gonna no listen at this point David Cox is my only friend so Thank I'm you, gonna David. coddle him um, it's, um, it's actually been like of of, um, of mice and men I'm gonna so protect him that I hope I don't actually but nobody is gonna make the joke about how Cox and coming. No, friends, somebody, right? didn't oh, somebody, <laughs> didn't okay, somebody didn't okay. make it somebody didn't make it somebody didn't make it yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone was like, Cox and Cummins. Cox and Cummins. David, that could be our band, man. Cox and Cummins. Cummins, Cox. No, Cox and Cummins. Or something. I'm just. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Now, doing their acoustic version of. <laughs> Please give it up for Cox and Cummins. Cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. <laughs> 
So anyway, David, hook up. Oh uh, my God. You play rhythm, I'll play lead guitar. Oh my God. So. Okay. I gotta pull it together. That is too funny to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I gotta pull it together. Um, with that, we should probably go right to Praise or Pummel because really now, right. at this point, oh my God, that's genius. Um, Listen, folks, you guys know that appraiser pummel, we take a couple of topics. They could be um, really important to the world, or they might not matter at all. They're just going to be like stupid little nuggets. Generally, they don't if you're a gambling man, I would put your chips on don't matter. Totally. <laughs> you, have, you have about 15 to 1 out totally, of that. Take it. Take totally, it. totally irrelevant. Okay. So the first topic up for Praiser Pummel, and again, with, with Praiser Pummel, we'd like to hear your opinions too. So if you want to get in the comments section and uh, and tell us what you praise and what you pummel, we'd love to hear from you as and well. And offer a suggestion for next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If there's something good that you guys want us to break down for sure. So the first one is uh, in Thousand Oaks, uh, California, not too far from where we are right now, a young lady, uh, completely mentally stable, I'm sure, um, <laughs> she, she met this guy. They went out a couple of times. He wanted to break it off or whatever, and uh, she really didn't agree with that choice. Ends up going down the man's chimney. And that's to, not a euphemism. It's she, not. she went down the man's chimney, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, she actually went down the guy's down chimney. The guy's chimney. So if you look up the footage of this, it's hilarious. They have to dismantle the chimney, like brick she by brick. She gets stuck brick. in the chimney. And then they see her or whatever, and they pull her out. And then, all right, they're like, are you okay, ma'am? Are you okay, ma'am? And you're under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I want to praise or pummel the woman's uh, enthusiasm for trying to win this uh, this gentleman. So, uh, you praising her efforts at, at finding love there or pummeling? <laughs> I think uh, the answer is, I think I have to pummel. Yeah. Listen, I understand that Santa Claus makes it look easy. <laughs> um, and he gets the whole world in one night yeah. and he's pretty rotund himself and maybe he... <gasps> And then goes down. But uh, climbing down a chimney is not easy. And yeah. uh, I believe this woman showed us that. And here's another thing, too. How far has she thought of it? Because it's a guy's not opening the door for you. And then you wind up at the bottom of this fireplace and go, Ha! Huh, anyway. Oh, so... Ah, it's nice to see you again. Um, Maybe she thought he likes black chicks more. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's more black face though, because they. So does he like? Yeah, yes. Does yeah. he like? Does he like old minstrel, <laughs> old minstrel performers? We're back to the fried chicken like, and like, watermelon all like, of a sudden. Like what was in her? I don't know. Because you gotta have a hell of a segue after. Like, hey, so you didn't let me in the front door, so I climbed down here. So, but listen. I really want to talk out our differences. I mean, you're What's the end game? So uh, So that's a pummel. Yeah, I think that's a pummel. Yeah, that's yeah a, I'm gonna I'm gonna pummel it to uh, I you know, I think meeting people is hard, you know, we've figured that out. Uh, but going down the chimney makes me wonder, did they meet on Tinder? <laughs> Okay, listen, that's bad. Listen, that's really bad. Can we get any time you catch yourself doing this to start to see somebody? <laughs> right. You got to stop yourself you gotta, and you got to go. No, actually, gotta, not gotta, a good idea. I'm going to climb back when up you, right, and down. That's the thing is when you really actually back it up like that. Yeah, and visualize this girl going up, up on the roof, down into. I like, when is that? When do you think that's going to work out? Okay. And she wasn't. Drug too. Like yeah, apparently I not. mean she was right. so she was so she actually thought like right. that the guy was gonna be like, you know what? I'm glad you figured it out. Like usually when I meet a girl to make sure she really likes me, right. I don't um I don't let her in the door, I lock all the windows, I pretty much <laughs> cut everything, and if she finds a way in, I know it's true love and you found the way in. Here's here um here's my rose. Yeah, and I'm and I'm thinking that in jail this woman should be given a copy of he's just not that into you because yeah, 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 like yeah. I clearly she men, doesn't uh, understand. Uh, men are from Mars and you're totally fucked. You totally, <laughs> totally. Cuz I I love that when girls are just like no he's just not calling me because like he doesn't he really likes me. He just doesn't want to show it. Like he doesn't want to show too much that he likes me. It's like yeah no he's not yeah, thinking about yeah, you at all. Like dudes are simple. This is one thing I would say to girls is like guys are very, very very easy to 
understand. If you well, think about it like in that terms, like when a guy likes you, he tells you and calls you and asks you to do stuff. If he doesn't, he doesn't call you. And I would even go so far as say a locked door is a pretty universal. I think that sort of stretches across all genders. It does, it does. I, think, I think when you show up and then the door locks and then you see the light go out and the drapes go across and then when you say I can I, I can hear you in there and they still don't answer then you know when you grab the ladder and put it on the side of the house you're making a real you really you got to consider your choices at that point <laughs> are you making the best possible choice for this relationship I'm telling you, I'm so. telling you. I think they met on tinder and she thought tinder mm -hmm. Kindling fire, fireplace. Yeah, I did see Go a down. picture of her, and yeah, Tinder's uh, very visual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. maybe his hand slipped the wrong way. Right, right. Yeah, oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> Delete. Can I get it? Hello, hello, friends? Tinder customer service. Yeah. I did a good swipe, and I meant to do a bad swipe. Can I unswipe? Do you know anybody that uses it? No, I'm I'm uh, I'm like three decades too old. Are you? Tinder. Are you? No, Some no, of folks at work use it. it really? It, yeah, like they sit there on set sometimes. Some of the guys in the crew and swipe through stuff. Yeah. And it's just so it's purely like, is there like like is there a way to get even less superficial? Than I Tinder? don't think so. How about like just Tinder, but for like the ass? So it's <laughs> like, no, I don't need to see the face. I don't need to. I just need to see that little. That little four-inch square thing that I'm actually going to be <laughs> um, in, um, inserting into. And there's your billion-dollar idea. Pete. There we go. There there's we go. your billion-dollar idea. Tinder just for crotchinder. Today, crotchinder. You just <laughs> you just check people's crotches. That's it. Does your crotch match with theirs? Hot box. <laughs> oh my god. Like, there's a crotch I want. <laughs> oh I, I can mate with that crotch. Oh my god. So, oh my gosh! Yes! Yeah, oh my goodness! So this would be one of the topics that we were saying doesn't really doesn't hold really much, and doesn't, much world doesn't, uh, world weight. Doesn't okay. This matters very much to our audience. I I, I okay. do know this. Uh, in Colorado, there you know they have legalized marijuana um, for medicinal purposes, but they are considering a law now that will change it so that uh, edibles, right, recreational rather, uh, weights from Colorado, but. He doesn't live there anymore. He lives in Los Angeles. <clears throat> so, at any rate, they're trying to remove edibles from the uh, from the options here. And I'm curious whether you're praising or pummeling the removal of edible items. I'm actually going to praise that. Yeah. Because I have two eight-year-old kids, mm -hmm. and the little pot gummy bears look like gummy bears. Yeah. And... I want my eight-year-old kid uh, getting stoned yeah. because then he's going to eat me out of my chips and my cookies. <laughs> right, that's... <laughs> uh, no, but it's like, here's, like, just like you don't smoke a cigarette, you don't make it look like a little kid's toy, yeah. or you don't do a beer. Didn't so they stop making like those a... candy cigarettes for that reason, that it, it was like too close to the real thing and then yeah, it would teach so. the kids to do the real thing? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so um, and they're still making the lozenges, and you can still smoke it, and, mm -hmm. and you know, and so just make it into more grown-up, like pot faux <laughs> <laughs> You know, no, you know, no, um, you know, pot escargot. Yeah, There's going to be right. no child who wants to eat snails. So you go, I want yeah. pot steak tartare, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably, I should probably, as a mother, agree with you on that one too. I think, I think. But as a total stone. No, <laughs> I have good. the occasional right. beer watching a fight on That's a Saturday. Right. That's right. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, it really is, uh, you know, for the children, uh, that that it is a little, it's a little too dangerous. I mean, listen, now it's gone to the the vaporizing and everything like that. Anyway, right? That's pretty much where it's going. So I understand that some people don't want to smoke, and so they want an option that's right. like quote unquote more healthy. Uh, so I guess they would have to start vaping or something like that because it, 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 it's a, like it would make me nervous if, like, say you brought some over to my house and then my daughter found it. Right. Um, well, and there's also so I many... I totally just set you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like <laughs> well, and actually, it, um, and, um, you know, and actually, it would just make me nervous if you came over to my house. That was it. Lock <laughs> door, <laughs> check the chimney. Listen. Oh. Um, <laughs> so like, there's so many ways to get THC yeah. in your body. You don't have to have it be like, oh, and, you know, and now we're going to make it really fun, like, too. Like a lollipop. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, no, I'm, I, you know, I'm totally for it, it you know. Keep pot legal, but let's not yeah. make it look like children's candy. Right, right. All right and we, you know, we actually have a few topics, but this one I'm curious about. Zach Galifianakis got, got skinny. Everybody knows Zach Galifianakis from, like from, from the Hangover movies. I actually, I, I, I'm not exactly sure what the storyline is as to why, 
but he got uh, much thinner. I'm going out. For, I'm going first on this one, and I'm pummeling the crap out of that because he's funny or fat. Like that's the that's to me that's part of his physical comedy. Like that's. I agree. That he, I agree. he's hilarious, but I don't. I I saw him skinny, and I was like, oh, that well, it's like, weird. No, because I mean, he's fat. He had like the beard, and you're like, oh, it's like Santa Claus's screwed up nephew. Right. I get right. it. And now he's skinny. You're like. Oh, it's like the homeless guy <laughs> right outside my apartment. Actually, right, right. not 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 funny at all. You no. just look. Can- so, if you're gonna go skinny, I think he's got to get rid of the beard, the be- and, and like- you know, and I think he's just got to completely shock us now and be like, "Hello, I'm Zachary." Right Gallifin- now, right? Is he trying to get yeah. leading man roles? If he do, you know. Yeah, he's you know you know yeah he's got to shave if he's gonna get a leading. Yeah, man role. well, he would- I mean, and this is coming from a guy with a sweater <laughs> on his face himself. But- well, because there was a time that. Wayne Knight from uh, Seinfeld, I guess. Remember, he used to be the, the mailman neighbor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nina. he had lost a lot of weight or something. He said he, yeah, he didn't get work after that because he it was such a part of who he was as a character. Right, actor. right. No, li- li- you know, listen. Um, and this is where, like, you got to put comedy above your health. Mm-hmm. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, John Candy, right, all, like all short, these great guys, fat, rich, funny life. Yeah, for long. and you know, and then you know, and, you know, and you have a heart attack at like forty-five or so. But Not listen, on top, man. we uh, we loved you while you were around. You were one of the uh, Zach. You were one of the best. Nice. I don't know who this skinny homeless guy is now that you're pretending to be. Yeah. Don't like it. And we have actually a bonus uh, praiser pummel. You you love the lottery. Four praiser pummel. You love the lottery winner. Oh yeah, this is great. That uh, some lottery winner in China won right. eighty-seven million dollars, and so to collect his money, he dressed in a bear outfit <laughs> to keep his identity hidden. Right. Um, yeah. So praise. So if you won money, would you keep your identity hidden, or would you want everyone to know? Uh, I probably wouldn't want people to know that I won the money because. Uh, I would uh, like. I have a list of things that I'm going to ask you for if you ever win. Oh, yes. so, <laughs> so, yeah, Not you, even that. You definitely want to keep it from me. No, I feel like I would. I would be generous. Like immediately, I would upsize. You know, my family's houses and stuff right, like that, right, and right. like pay off any loans or. You know what I mean? I would. I would like immediately bring everybody, at least to even. If not, you know what I mean. Do what I. But could so you got to be it. careful with that too, because people start going like. <laughs> What? How are you able to do all this? Well, sure. I mean, I'm saying my family would figure it out. I, I, I guess, I don't know, because I feel like then there, there's some, there's like, sometimes there's that backlash of people who get a lot of money and then maybe they still want to work or something or do their thing. Well, what are you doing? Why are you still want to work? Like, right. flip side of that, though, I would be more than happy to just travel the world for the rest of my life and not work. And some of you haters are be really happy about that, too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I'm I, personally, yeah, I would probably not want everybody to know. I That's a good one for the haters yeah. because now you put them in the awkward p- position. Be like, yeah, Karen, I hope you do win the lottery. Yeah. Wait, no, wait a minute. Bring that no, universe hold on. I hope positivity you to me. No, no go, you, I wait. don't like you. So <sighs> no, no, I totally I. It, like I won one because you would have friends coming out of oh, the water. All over and the like place. seriously, if you won like eighty seven million bucks and I needed like five thousand to start <laughs> a business, I would expect that you would pull that you, out of your well, pocket. Well you would. For and me. every time and I'd be like, Ken, dude, it's just five, five grand. grand. What the You made that really? an interest the last five minutes. Yeah. But that's the thing, is now is just, like everybody assumes if you go out well, obviously Pete's picking up the tab. Right, obviously, you right, know what I mean? Because right. now are you the tool if you don't pick up yeah, the tab? Yeah, totally, totally. They're like, all right, well, Pete, we all have to worry about our DWP <laughs> B bill. B bill. Don't right? call me tomorrow because my phone's getting cut off. Um, but um, but, but no, you, I'll put Mr. in for dinner. Million, yeah, sure, why don't we all divide it up equally? Uh, no, I'll tell you, though. And the funny thing is, is you wore, like, a really creepy bear outfit. It was creepy. Which, like, I like because now that you're that rich, I think you can wear, like, really creepy animal costumes. <laughs> and... Uh, I would wear the really creepy bear outfit, and then I would like call up like that girlfriend who dumped me in high school and go, "Hi, yeah, it's me in the bear outfit, and I've won eighty-seven million. Go fuck yourself." <laughs> and so, like everyone who was like mean to me would just get these like weird phone calls right. from like a creepy bear right, over the next couple right. of weeks. Oh, hey, God. are you glad you fired me? Because it's me in the creepy bear outfit. <laughs> do you play the lotto? Do you do the lottery? 
You know, I do it when my father-in-law's in town yeah. because he does it, and I try to explain to him. I'm like, listen, it's a losing proposition. Because, because you actually studied math. Like, you actually yeah. know statistics well, and math. Okay, here's how it generally works. If they sell a million dollars worth of lottery tickets, they'll pay the winner 500000 Right. So you're risking a dollar for a probability to win 50 cents. <laughs> but every time I try to explain that to my father-in-law, he goes, you can't win it if you're not in it. And he just kept spewing, spewing the British lottery slogan at me. And I'm like, no, listen. Okay, the probability, if a million people play and they're giving out 500,000, you take 500,000, you divide it by a million, 0.5, 50 cents, that's your probability. You're spending a dollar for a probability of 50 cents. And like, he kind of looks at me and then goes, and, and like, he's a perfect comic timing, but he doesn't realize he's being funny. He goes, you can't win it if you're not in it. Ah! All right, let's go to the store. Because because then he gets me into like, I'm like, if he goes and he wins, you're the hero. Like, I'm the you're asshole. The, so every time he comes, I end up spending like eight bucks on lottery yeah. tickets. Um, and guess what? I've been in it and I haven't <laughs> win it. You know, because my, uh, my dad liked to, to play uh, what Powerball, I guess, you know, for fun. Like, because I think, it, I think it's, it's just kind of that fun, that, like, what if thing. And right, you know what I mean? Right. And, yeah, I mean, if you're only talking a few dollars, it's not like he would invest, you know, tons and tons of money on that. But it's funny. It's something about the father-in-law thing because I've been known to give my father-in-law, Steve, like, lottery tickets for right, Christmas right, or, right. like, scratch. And just because, you know, he's not a degenerate gambler or anything, it's just fun. Like, I don't know. It's just because how cool would that be is if you gave somebody a present and, like, boom. Like, they want to even just, like, 10 grand right, or something. Right. That would be pretty cool. Well, the funny thing is, is that, so my father-in-law, son married a woman this is getting complicated yeah, whose who's mother probability of failure whose of mother yeah. whose mother won the lottery twice Nuh-uh. for like one for like a, um, one for like a, like 250,000 and one for like 50,000. No way. Like spread over. And so now it's like... Oh, that like, justifies your father-in-law for the rest of Yeah, well, yeah. He's like, he's like, he, he's like insane now because he can't for you. So... My father in law is great too. Yeah, he's great. great. So I he's great. Put, but uh, yeah, you, you can't win it if you're not. No! Don't you see? That's what they they told you to say that. They've got that in your head. And guess what, Pops? Everything that happens in Vegas does not stay there, right? <laughs> it's poor man's tax. It's, the, um, yeah. You know, the lottery is the poor man's yeah, tax. Yeah. So. Well, listen, Pete, it's been fun. And again, um, I will be uh, back in action on Wednesday on UFC Tonight uh, and Friday doing the weigh-in show on Fox Sports 1. There's the weigh-in show, I want to say, is like, we, I think we're on sort of the uh, noon-ish or something, West Coast time. i got to double-check. I just know I have an 8 a.m. call time. So, Daddy's on drop-off service for uh, for school that day. But, uh, but yeah, so that's going to be fun. So, that's on Fox Sports 1. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Karen Bryant, K-A-R-Y-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T. Go to Facebook forward slash MMA Heat. And you can also look for Karen Bryant and uh, MMA Heat channels on YouTube. And please subscribe so that you don't miss anything. Pete, where can they find you? Well, uh, David Cox and I will be doing our acoustic. <laughs> you know, no, seriously, if I don't make it here next week, it's do send the police over to check David Cox because no one has ever said three things nice about me in a week without trying to lure me into some van. Uh, no. <laughs> You can find me at MyNoogie yeah. on uh, Twitter. MyNoogie on Twitter. Awesome. Uh, well, it's been it's been fun. And I thought there was something else I was going to say now. I don't remember. Oh, oh, obviously, I want to say thank Tyron Woodley for uh, for joining us. And I uh, want to stay tuned. Hopefully, you know, really excited to see who fights next. Yeah. I want to see more guys who interview us, like, multitask when they're interviewing. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Run some errands. You know, he was in a car. Like, I think the next fighter used to be, like, sitting on the can, oh taking a dump. I- Interviewing us while also doing a crossword puzzle I am a little and, cons- and juggling cats. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, really, I got a good fight coming up. Hold on, hold on, I got to do a courtesy flush. <laughs> <laughs> a little, because we're like this interview stinks. Um, <laughs> the uh, I'm a little concerned about The Walking Dead. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little concerned. I love hearing that though because <laughs> we're interviewing him, and all I'm thinking is this dude's so incredible. Yeah, like he's like brought himself out and right, yeah, right, he's right. like a top fighter he's really well spoken yeah, yeah, I like, read some like he was like a straight A student yeah, yeah, I'm like yeah. this guy's better than me and every oh what's that 
Oh, you let your child watch The Walking Dead? <laughs> yeah, Tara. <laughs> because I have never done that. I haven't even read any parenting books, but I know not to let my kid watch. So, Pete coming one, <laughs> Tyron Woodley, like 574, uh, but I'm catching up. <laughs> damn, yeah, that, that scared me a little bit, a little bit. Also, I want to remind you folks, so, that if you want to get uh, your Onnit products, we give you a 10% discount if you go to mmeheat.com forward slash Onnit, that's O-N-N-I-T, you'll get 10% off, and uh, it's good stuff. So, thank you, and um, Pete, next time we might, well, are we going to get the desk? Next time, are we step? We're stepping. We're, gonna, it, we're take, gonna take it to the next level now. Yeah, we don't. You know, this is this is sort of our beginning, and yeah, and we're gonna go a little bit better. I don't know if we'll be ready for next time, but we're unfortunately, gonna go. it's the same two people, and yet we will do this. <laughs> take some shiny things. You're stuck with my old guy. How long did you write that poster? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you this next time. This is a sign poster. Oh my gosh. We'll see you next time.